Right, we put it all together, found all the parts. Sometimes it's not so easy to get at the food. With solar cookers, you can't actually reach the food a lot of the time. We might be talking about convenience. Size matters with solar cookers. Um, bigger is better, especially with reflectors. Or is it? It blows away. Maybe not if you live in a windy place. Solar cookers need sunshine. They need leaving outside to cook for a long time so they can harvest all the sunshine and let the food cook. There can be a problem. Actually, they're easy to steal. No solar cooker, no hot food. Very disappointing. Okay, so if you don't predict the weather okay and you don't, you don't get it right, there could also be a problem, especially if you live in the UK or maybe today in Faro. Right, so what do we need for a convenient solar cooker? Always ready to use. Weatherproof, difficult to steal, suited to the local climate where you intend to use it, easy to use, and sufficient capacity for the, um, for the people you want to cook, for uh, your family or the group, and ideally it would be nice if you could use it from inside the house or inside the kitchen out, out, out of the weather, you know. So um, let's do uh, a quick uh, Pecha Kupcha tour of some convenient solar cookers and have a quick think about how convenient they are. Um, I don't actually think there's one particular solar cooker that's you know, absolutely convenient, but um, we'll get there in the end. Okay. This is uh, quite an old one that's been around for many years. The, uh, the on the wall box cooker of um, Funk and Keller. It's pretty convenient really, you access it from a little door inside your kitchen. It needs to be on a south facing wall of, of course, um, pretty weatherproof, pretty hard to steal. Um, I like it. It shows confidence in uh, solar cooking that you can fix it to your house. Um, here's, uh, here's another one from uh, Luther, where is he? This is, um, uh, I've always liked this one, the, the colour scheme's great. Something a bit I care about the colour scheme, but it's actually inside the house, so try stealing that, you're going to have to take the whole house away. Um, but big reflectors outside, presumably it faces south. It wouldn't be so good if it faced north in the northern hemisphere. Um, very convenient, don't have to leave the house at all. Um, next slide. Um, this one, this um, kind of is one from Bombay in India. Uh, it doesn't uh, actually have any reflectors, but perhaps it doesn't need any in India. There's so much sunshine. Um, I'd like to hear a bit more of this, but it looks pretty, pretty good, pretty slick. Next up, this one's very eccentric. It's the eccentric flexible solar tracking parabolic <laughs> reflector that we saw yesterday in Tamera. Um, very, uh, very convenient indeed. Really, it's um, it's a great big, massive um, uh, Scheffler reflector, which which sends lots of sunshine into a focal point inside the kitchen, reflected onto the base of a pot. Um, it's, uh, I believe, it's cooking on a regular basis for um, up to thirty people, maybe up to a hundred people at a stretch, um, and. We're, get, we're slowly starting to get very close indeed to the convenience of a modern fossil fuel kitchen with, with Scheffler reflectors. So I don't think they're going to blow away very quickly either. Um, this one tracks the sun automatically with a photovoltaic cell. So, you know, a, a, a large tick, a, lot, a, lot, a large amount of convenience points with that one. Next up. Um, is this is one of my own from, um, from Slick. Out of, um, 
As my many solar cookers, it gets used the most actually. Um, it's simple and it's always ready to use. Uh, you can actually see it in the rain. This is in England. Weatherproof in England is a big deal. Um, it's, it's, it hangs there, it's glass. So it hangs there high above any trouble, um, footballs and kids. It's out the way. Um, it's always ready to use. You can throw some food in the, in the morning and just leave it, come back and it's, it's cooked through. It doesn't have a big concentration. Uh, I don't need a big concentration for slow cooking throughout the day. Uh, so I don't, have to, I don't need to worry about it burning. So for me, it's been a very, very efficient cooker. Nobody's stolen it yet. I, uh, I liked it so much that I, um, I put it on my camper van, trying to take it on holiday so I could cook with it when I was away. Um, here it is. Um, but it, it wasn't so, um, so, so useful. It was a bit dangerous maybe high up there with all that hot liquid above my head. Uh, so uh, I also thought it might be a problem with the police stopping me, um, thinking it's some kind of rocket launch or terrorist thing. So, so I took it down. It wasn't very convenient. Um, next on. Here's um, another offering from, um, from Slick, this, this time from, from Dave. It's Dave's Tilty, Tilty 2, apparently. There must have been a Tilty 1 uh, along the way. It's, um, it's, it's wall mounted, you can't see the brackets. Um, it's, it's mounted on the corner of an outside kitchen at a, um, a campsite. And uh, so, so it can catch, it can tilt and catch the sun from different directions, which is very useful. Uh, also, um, it tilts up and down, so we've got the horizontal and vertical, very, very useful. And uh, I understand that, um, well, I've seen it in action actually, uh, it goes from 0 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees uh, C in just five minutes. Dave's been, um, in winter, Dave's been preparing uh, baguettes, really nice baguettes, um, you know, before 9 o'clock in the morning. So um, we have you know, a lot of concentration there. It needs to be attended or it's going to kind of incinerate anything inside. But um, yeah, we're we starting to get to a pretty convenient um, type of cooker. Here's another wall mounted cooker. Uh, this one, uh, this time's from Solar Genius. It's um, swivels left and right, uh, made from weatherproof material, stainless steel. Um, and you know, when it's winter, it can just lock away and get out. Um, out, out, out of sight. It's telling me there's a minute, so I'll try and speak a bit faster. Here's uh, AJ's Prince 40. Serious power there. Um, big beast. And I uh, don't think anybody's stealing it very quickly. Um, this one's a uh, big beast from Cyprus. Salvas's um, parabolic trough evacuated tube. He reckons it can feed 50 at a Greek banquet. And here's another piece. Um, no. I'm not sure. Um, what was there's there. There's someone in the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the complex here clearly. So we'll move on to the next slide. Look, <laughs> nice tomato. Is this, is this what they mean by dual purpose solar cooker? Armchair meets the solar cooker. Here we go. It's the it's the concrete funnel cooker. The bucket cooker. Glad I said that right. <laughs> um, it's made from cheap building materials. Uh, I think this one's going to last generations. Very easy to, um, to to repair and always ready to cook. It's even got um, the eyes for washing machines as the greenhouse trap there. So um, very convenient cooker there. I think we'll be seeing one of those uh, over the next couple of days. And here we go with those. Not, not, not many now. This is uh, the Heliac, the first lens cooker of Heliac which um, I think wouldn't look out of place on any um, European patio during the summer. It comes with a parasol or an umbrella built in to keep the sun and the rain off you as well. It's very convenient. And finally, this is the, this is the parabolic trough metal tube cooker from uh, Ivan Yelinsky, um, which is in daily use as a commercial bakery in Lesotho. It's the only commercial bakery that I'm aware of in, in the world and the bread that's produced um, undercuts the local fossil fuel made bread and is, is sold locally. So it's, it's a great model for development and um, it doesn't have any glass, it's very difficult to break 
Uh, but because it's in use on a daily basis, it really suggests to me that it's a very convenient cover. So to wrap all this up, um, the conclusion, to compete with a fossil fuel kitchen, you need to make your solar cookers convenient. Um, I'm Stuart, that's Dave, we're Slick UK, thank you very much. <laughs>
but they didn't take any film of the soda cream. <laughs> but I did get on television. There I am. That's not you, Dave, it's got her. <laughs> So, we still haven't infected anyone by that verb television. But uh, there may be another way of getting on television. Uh, this is uh, Tim. Uh, he's a TV chef. He cooks up uh, food on the television, on television programs. And so we contacted him and we said, can we come and talk to you about solo cooking? And he said, yeah, come to my house. So we filled his garden with solar cookers, uh, as you see. And uh, we spent a long time uh, cooking in his garden. We cooked lots of food. He cooked some food too. We, uh, we got there uh, three, types of, three types of bread, three types of curry, two types of cake, some potatoes. We cooked a lot of things. And then we ate it. We sat down with him uh, for a long time, and uh, we hoped that he would invite us on to uh, a TV program to talk about solo cooking, and, um, but he didn't, so <laughs> that hasn't worked. This is uh, an NGO. The next thing is, why not try and affect some charities? This is uh, Shelterbox. They're a charity in Cornwall, southwest of England and they um, try and intervene if there are natural disasters like earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, that kind of thing. And they try to be the first people there with some aid and they fill these boxes with <coughs> tents and tools, uh, sleeping bags and so on. Um, but they also include cooking gear like this. And I thought, well, if they, um, if they had a black pot and a panel cooker folded up in their box and maybe some uh, oven plastic uh, sheet then they would be able to sterilise water and maybe cook a little bit of food um, so I contacted them and I said can I come and talk to you about solar cookers and they said um, thank you for that but no, not now, we're very busy but if uh, we can, we, you can assist us in the future we think we'll be in touch you know, and that's good, isn't it? Because that means I'll be the person they come to to talk about solar cooking. But if you're uh, English, and we're very polite to each other, uh, you will know that this expression... This expression here, this expression here uh, actually means we will not be in touch. <laughs> Go away. So, so this didn't work. Um, but what about social media? Um, uh, last year, no, July 17, Stuart set up this um, uh, web page, group web page, uh, Solar Cooking UK, and now we have 500 uh, members, and 300 of them are from the UK. So we have managed to infect a lot of people in the UK via social media. Continuing with social media, there's also YouTube, and we have, uh, we can find four YouTube videos that have had more than a million views each. Now that's, that's a lot of views, um, and we think it has great potential. In fact, I, I myself have a video uh, which has nearly 9 million views. This is my video here. It's um, not about solar cooking. Okay, <laughs> no, it's, it's about something else. But 9 million is still a big number and we think it's got huge potential. So even though we haven't started making our films, we're counting it as one of the things that we think will work. Um, there are people here who already are making videos. I know Celestino recently made a video, a video. And Sarah, who you saw earlier, has got a whole series of videos that she's made. And she introduces herself as a professional solo chef. So naturally, when we introduce our videos, we will be unprofessional solo <laughs> chefs. Um, and so th these are the 
uh, methods. These, we think that's a good method. So these are the four methods that either have worked for us or we're pretty certain will work. If you've got any other ideas for, for spreading the center of cooking virus, please let us know. And that's the setting up, I have, I have something to say. I'm writing a, a book right now on obstacles that I've encountered and others to solar cooking to spreading. So I'd be interested in anyone who would like to talk to me about your own experiences. We've already learned some. I would love to interview you during this. And I'm also doing an informal survey on people who use the Wikipedia site of Solar Cookers International, which is, has pages for every country, any companies that want to put their information on there. I'd be really interested to know if you're aware of this website, which is a really powerful one, right? And uh, how you use it. So if you just can come and talk to me during the conference, I'd like that information. Okay? Um, hi. Hi everyone, um, my name is Marcela Llama and I'm with Professor Antonio Lepona and um, we will be presenting the uh, photovoltaic solar cooker we built at the University of Carlos III of Madrid. So, um, we decided to go for a photovoltaic panel because, uh, well, first of all, we didn't want to use fire because of the emissions it provides and we wanted to use a PV panel so that cooking was um, able to be per performed inside, indoors, in a safer environment. So um, this panel needs two things. needs a controller to maximize the current created by the panel. And also, we wanted to have some sort of solution for energy storage. So this is a model of the installation we built. It has the PV panel. It has an integrated circuit that regulates the current created by the PV panel. And it has the cooking part that was covered with an insulation um, material. So we, this is a panel we did to use in your installation. Uh, once we perform all our calculations and we study the, the functionality of the panel, um, we, decide, uh, we design the control circuit. Now, this control circuit um, maximizes the, uh, the heat transfer that occurs during cooking. And I'm not going to go into detail because it's a bit boring, but um, if anyone's interested, this is the calculations that we followed to um, be able to tell if our, if our system was giving us the right numbers. Um, we also had uh, the, the, the sensors. Uh, calibrated and we also study theoretically what the cure of temperature was supposed to look like in our um, experiment trials. So this is the trials schedule we followed and the first, the first three were like testing of the heating plate. The fourth one was the final testing one. Uh, was in a, in a, was performed, it was performed in a lab at a unit and we really were just 
wanted to see if the resistors were working as we expected. Um, this June 10th was the first real trial. This was with the whole installation in the outside of the university you know, uh, surroundings. Um, it was a sunny day. It took 1.5 hours to heat up until boiling temperature water, and then it took like 18 hours to cool down until room temperature water again. Uh, this was because we used the uh, rock wall installation. So, I mean, really conditions were like, the conditions are like set in a tarp. And the last trial was the actual trial where we cooked. And um, the reason we cooked 31 centimeter square potato cubes was because uh, we followed um, a study performed in an, in an Indian university that is called Kinetics of Potato Cubes during cooking. So that we were able, like following it, we were able to tell if it was working properly or not. Um, it did work <laughs> and, you, and everything was good as we expected. So really the conclusion is that we could come up with a, a nice solution using renewable energy and using a photovoltaic panel uh, that it was robust and it worked better than we expected actually. Um, both the theoretical and the experimental um, studies were like made sense among them themselves. So um, yeah, the the last thing I wanna tell about is that this gives us or this gave us a possibility of of, of commercial um, making possible into the market was something like this to, to, to come up. And it's actually, it's not something very common because like normally solar cooking uses direct radiation because of heat loss. But we try to come up with another solution. Yes. Um, and as uh, last thing, uh, Anthony wants to say something. Um, he has some books about I have uh, written uh, two books. One is in Spanish about uh, solar cooking, and the other one that is very recent is about solar fan. Uh, both of them, a sample of both of them, will be tomorrow available on the desk and uh, with a brochure, brochure. And in this brochure, you can find a link where to download the books as a PDF for free. This is a result of uh, a collaboration of a network on uh, an energy supply to remote uh, uh, communities in South America. So thanks to them, we can uh, have both books for free. Okay? And you can see the samples there and, and uh, take the brochure and download the, the books. Thank you very much. Resistor, in principle, is that you can get much higher temperatures than the boiling point of water. So I ask the question: If you are also investigating in phase change materials, not like water, salts, uh, going to two, 250 degrees, taking advantage of your internal heat delivery, uh, possibly insulating by vacuum, and then really having something much more effective than low temperature boiling. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. This is a very good uh, question. We developed a first generation solar cooker with resistances. This works okay. And even you can fry, because you are right, that because we, we deliver the heat from the inside, and we have uh, this uh, thermal insulation around, that actually the, the electronic cooker has already it, okay? okay. So uh, you can do that, but the problem is to to match the non-linear behavior of the photovoltaic panels with the linear behavior of the resistances. For that, you need a, a controller. Yeah. 
And these controllers are commercially available. They are very cheap. You can find them for 15 or 20 euros worldwide, made in China. But there is an enormous problem with them. They need a battery. They cannot work without a battery. And a battery for us seems something that is heavy, polluting, and very costly. Three, three things that uh, we don't like about them. And the efficiency of the, the whole electronics, we have already checked, is not very high. And because we want to use just a single solar panel, this is no good. Then we developed a new concept. This concept is mm, no battery at all. Uh, put a thermal battery inside the cooker that we have already developed with erythritol. Erythritol is a phase change material that is very suitable for that. First point. Uh, and this can take uh, around uh, the whole night. The heat can, can stay there, the retention of heat can stay there for the whole night. And it's not expensive. It's, it's a substance that you can eat it because it's a non-caloric sugar and it's uh, produced by millions of stones in the world. This is the second step. And the third step is to use, instead of resistances, can you show the slide yes. please? Is to use, instead of the resistances, to use a combination of resistances and transistors, power transistors. The power transistors are non-linear also, so they match perfectly the behavior of the uh, photovoltaic panels. And then the controller is very simple and is made by uh, ourselves. It's, uh, so we will deliver its design so that everybody can use it or improve it. It's a very, very tiny box. I don't think we have uh, a photograph, but probably in the paper, yes. No? So uh, uh, this way, uh, is, is everything is very simple. Right? You can see the four power transistors in the heating plate. And curiously, they are cheaper than resistors. <laughs> because they are produced by millions worldwide. So you see these resistances that are not uh, 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 practical resistance because they are laboratory resistance, but you can uh, put uh, normal resistances, commercial resistance instead of, of them. No. So the combination of four power transistors and four resistances, you can almost connect directly the, 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 this pot that is a commercial pot with the uh, uh, PV uh, solar panel. Well, the, the end result is cheap and simple. The, the, the circuit can be built almost everywhere and repaired almost everywhere. No? But we have a problem. <laughs> and the problem is that the transistor do, don't uh, sustain higher temperatures than 140 degrees. So we cannot with this uh, thing, we cannot frag. We can only boil. This is the problem. Okay, uh, so uh, it's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. If you uh, want to know uh, something more about that, we are open uh, to, to deliver any information. Okay, we are closing this. Uh, uh, so before, before going to the break, uh, every year, five minutes, ten minutes, and people did not pay. Can, so for that reason, we are in the program long break. Okay, uh, the break. Uh,